called object wrapper. <clears throat> so understand that each uh, primitive data type that we had, right? Each primitive data type where seven of them were there. Out of those primitive data types, except the undefined n null has a corresponding wrapper class. A class is again a kind of a, a, a data, data structure that is a, a present in JavaScript, which we are going to see what is a class, what, what is meant by an instance of a class, which is an object and all those we are going to see later when we talk about classes. Okay, But for now, understand that there is a built-in wrapper class available in JavaScript for all the primitive type except for the undefined n null and we'll see what that is all wrapper classes will be functions called okay there will be a function that is called and it will do certain um, uh, conversion so what it does which converts an arbitrary value to a primitive type okay and that represents the class we will talk about and just give you a snapshot of what the primitive data types and what are its corresponding wrapper functions or a, uh, wrapper classes. So these are the data types we talked about that JavaScript supports seven primitive data types, number, string, boolean, begin, symbol, and then undefined and null. Except for undefined and null, all of them have a wrapper object, except the undefined and null where it is not applicable and type of return value is whenever uh, a type of is again a built-in method which returns what is the data type of a particular variable so if it is number it will return number if it is string string boolean begin symbol undefined object wherever it is null it will return object not the null that is what you need to just remember but for our area of interest now would be this object wrapper so what does this object wrapper uh, a function or class will talk about? Let's see with some examples so that we understand this better. All wrapper classes is a function which converts an arbitrary value to a primitive type. So this is where you are talking about some kind of a conversion. Let's see. So we, 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 we let's say, let uh, string is equal to uh, I'll, I'll say the string is 99 okay even though it contains the string numbers but it is still within the single quotes which means the str would be of string type Let me, if we can go ahead and see the value of str the type of data type of a string variable will be a string now let's say <clears throat> we we have got this uh, wrapper object right uh, wrapper object is already been there and it does certain things so what it does let's say um number and we'll say string so there is a there's a beauty that happens here what is happening here this is a wrapper object that we we see here for a number, there is N capital, rest all will be a small letters and inside that this you are going to pass a parameter and that parameter will be either a variable or you can pass a value also. That is fine. So what it is doing now here, a number object wrapper is converting the string data type to a number. And if you see, if I go ahead and assign this to a particular uh, variable, maybe I'll say num1 okay just for the purpose of determining what it is okay sorry here let's say let num1 is equal to and if i hit enter so whatever is happening with this object wrapper will be returned and stored here and if i recall num1 what is happening here num1 is getting the value of 99 and the type of num1 will be number initially it was a string okay we used a number object wrapper it converts this string value into a number by using number object wrapper and so is the case with 
again string as well if you if you talk about let's say uh, uh, number one is containing 99 and if i go ahead and say string num1 what it will do it will convert the number into a string if you see if you just observe it is in a single quotes okay now it is number which is a, a, a number data type is now converted into a string data type by using a string object wrapper and so is the case with boolean as well if there is a boolean and if i want to convert certain value like uh, if it contains any value then it will be true if it contains uh, zero it will be uh, if it, it is empty then it will be false if it contains zero it will return false okay and if it contain empty string it will also return false if it contain any uh, 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 string element then it will return true okay so this is about the boolean wrapper object so is the case with other objects as well other than uh, undefined and null undefined and null do not have a object wrapper and this is a good way if you want to convert from one data type to another you can do a kind of a type conversion that can happen here now <clears throat> with that being said another thing that you need to observe here is only the wrapper classes like number string and boolean can be instantiated via new operator new operator is something that you can combine with these three number string and boolean to create that particular object that particular data type now what we have seen earlier is just uh, just take for this example let's say if you see let str is equal to is equal to this is string i'm i'm just i'm just defining a variable called str which is storing the string value okay this is one way of creating a string data type all right there is another way that you can instantiate using a new operator and the object wrapper okay that that also is possible but how can we achieve that particular thing we can we can go ahead and see what happens when we combined that which means uh, a string wrapper object into using a new operator let's say you want to create let strobj is equal to i'm going to use new then i'm going to use string inside that i'm going to give something some value maybe this is a string okay simple now if i hit enter if i go ahead and see j what it says this new operator has created a string object okay now what it contains it contains a string with all these values that it has okay this is a good way of creating a new string okay we can go ahead and create a new string using this particular new operator all right and when whenever you want to convert this into a string value, that again is possible and we can do that in different ways and that we'll see uh, what kind of uh, uh, thing that we can use in terms of a string operator and how, how do we convert that in later whenever we we talk about another things we will talk about that as well but for now just understand there is a new operator that you can use there is an object wrapper object wrapper is existing for all the data types except the undefined and null and the new operator which is for instantiation or creation of a new variable number string and boolean it is applicable for rest of the um, data types it is not all right now with that being said we'll talk about another data type now so for what we have talked about we have uh, we have understood numbers we have understood string data type and now we are going to talk about undefined undefined is another primitive data type that is available for javascript and this data type is a variable without a value all right it does it 
does not it it does not contain any value at all that is the reason it will be called as undefined and now <clears throat> any variable can be emptied but setting a value of undefined is also uh, you, you can go ahead and uh, make the variable as empty let's let me talk about that a little bit now let's consider um, some of the examples around undefined data type okay let me go here uh, yeah let me clear this we have seen this earlier as well but i'll i'll just give you uh, let's say let grades is equal to okay I'm, I'm just saying let grades now what is happening here guys i am using a let keyword and i have given a variable which is an identifier but there is no assignment or initialization of this variable so that the variable can be determined what data type it is if i assign this to a number it will become a number if i assign this uh, is equal to a string value then this becomes a string and if I do not assign anything, then grades, if I see the type of type of grades, then this will return a value called undefined. All right. So undefined is a, another data type that is built in data type where a variable is not having any value at all. And <clears throat> there was a point that we talked about here. Any variable can be emptied. Emptied means it doesn't hold any value. By setting this to null, uh, by setting this to undefined. Like, what, what does that mean is, let's say uh, that is the string. Let string is equal to this string. Now, in order to make this string empty, then what, what can be done? We can just go ahead and say string is equal to undefined all right now if i go ahead and recall string it will say as undefined and type of string will be okay it is still intact with the string value but it is holding a value called undefined now what is the important thing that we need to understand here is doing this is not encouraged it is not recommended doing this okay this is not the right way to do it whenever you want to empty a variable this is not the right way to do it okay but this is not encouraged what you need to take away from here is if there is a variable that is not having any value then it will hold it it becomes a data type undefined okay so understood guys so far yes sir all right yes, sir. Yeah, let's go ahead and talk about a null data type now so again null is also a valid primitive data type that is existing for javascript and a special value which represents nothing or emptiness or unknown value that is called null so whenever the value is nothing which is empty it is not containing any value it, value is totally unknown that is when we say the data type is null and null is not same as zero or false or an empty string it is not like for example um, uh, let's say let str let str is equal to empty string so what is being done here i am giving the empty string now if i go ahead and see the type of type of this it will still be string because it is an empty string doesn't mean it is null no and even the case with let number is equal to zero so now type of number is still number even though it is zero it doesn't mean it is of null data type no okay that is what the last uh, point says null is not same as zero or false or or for that matter empty string so false was for boolean case again that is what we need to understand so null means it is nothing empty or value is unknown okay null data type has its own null data type now we will we, understand uh, some example here how do we create a null data type let's say i want to create 
something called as let count is equal to let's say null now type of count will be what object okay it won't be null because as you saw earlier in that in this ta table for a null data type the type of will return what object it won't return null for all the primitive data type it will return the same like number for number it will return number for string string so and so forth and for symbol symbol but for only null it will return a data type of object the type of method will return the value called object okay that is something you need to remember and also um, uh, this is how you create a null data type assign a value called null that is when this will be called as a null data type or it is holding a value of or nothingness okay nothingness or emptiness that is a null data type and in order to understand, now you've seen the null, you have seen undefined. And what is the difference between these two? There is a difference. If we observe this, the difference between null and undefined, you'll be able to understand. Like, for example, type of null variable will return objects. That's what we saw. It won't return null. And whereas the type of undefined will return undefined. Okay. And null strict equality to undefined will return false that is the reason they are not the same they are different okay whereas the uh, only equal to comparison operator will return true okay understand this strict comparison is false whereas equal to means it is only comparing the values but not the data types where is uh, two equal to this is set as true whereas triple equal to which is strict equality which is comparing the data type as well as the value this is actually returning the false and null is triple equal to true null is obviously this is fine and not equal to null will return true and because the boolean of null is false if you observe this boolean object if you call as null this will return false which means the boolean object wrapper of a null data type will return false all right but if it is uh, and it will also return z for zero is also false and for, for undefined is also false all right now <clears throat> again there is a function called is nan means it will return true or false like for example uh, is nan is a built-in method and if i go ahead and uh, pass some value like for example one two three then this will say is nan is it a nan not a number which is this no false because this is actually a number and if i say is nan of nan obviously it will say true all right in the same way is nan one plus null will return false okay which means this is not nan whereas one plus undefined will return true because this is actually an an like for example is nan is a method which will return either true or false depending on what parameter you are passing if you are verifying whether the parameter that is passed is a nan or not like for example undefined so undefined is actually a nan Okay, whereas null is not a NAN, right? That is again a difference that you need to observe. All right. With that being said, we understood uh, some concepts related to numbers, strings, undefined, null. And the next uh, interesting uh, seven primitive data type is Boolean. Boolean is what it will always have two values true or false okay only two uh, um, return values either true or false and now this is also a built-in primitive data type the boolean will represent two values that is true and false and uh, observe that it is all in small letters okay small cases not the uh, uh, capital letters all right 
and booleans are often used in conditional testing that's what we saw if you have a comparison or condition testing then this is a, a good way to check the conditional testing and any numeric type is false if equal to zero or null and true otherwise so what it means is like for example let's let's take this uh, uh, entirely a boolean uh, data type with some uh, good examples all right so we saw that is a boolean object wrapper that is existing boolean of a number is true boolean of a zero is false boolean of null is also false boolean of nan is also false okay boolean of undefined is also false but boolean of a string is true if you if it is empty string it is false if it is some holding some value then this is true all right and you 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 can go ahead and use this uh, boolean wrapper for a lot of things again uh, i know we have not started the arrays but boolean of an empty array will return true okay boolean of a uh, uh, like for example if you use curly brackets right curly brackets are used for object and this is also it will return true value all right so these are all the boolean data type again you can create boolean data type using the object wrapper with the new but you can also uh, uh, go ahead and create a boolean data type like this like for example let's say let is greater than is greater is equal to true okay you are assigning a value called true and this is a keyword and that is the reason you are seeing this in different color whereas if i go ahead and see the type of is greater oh sorry type of is greater will return a data type of boolean because it is set to true all right so again you can go ahead and create this by assigning true or false to a particular variable and that value whatever the value if it holds zero true or false depending on that this data type will have a boolean data type all right this is again another data type that we need to understand again there are a certain uh, couple of methods all these data type null and uh, the null and undefined uh, doesn't have any kind of uh, built-in uh, methods but uh, boolean has some built-in methods like two string if you want to convert a particular boolean into a string you can use two string method and also there is a value of method as well which returns the primitive value of a boolean object that is also a way because that those are two string and two va value of are applicable for strings as well okay they are like common uh, methods that you can go ahead and use like if i see is greater is greater dot if i put you you'll, you'll see what are the methods or properties that it contains like i talked about two string i talked about the value of these are again uh, two and has own properties prototype of these are uh, again some of the methods and properties that it contains so majorly these two okay and uh, what else we have yeah we can we can see what else next the yeah, true key and falsy value also we have seen but uh, to give you a perspective all javascript values have a inherent truthiness or falseness associated with them okay what it means is <clears throat> any value we are talking about javascript value it is false for all these values for other than these they are, they are true which means the number which is zero will always have a, a, a truthiness of false and nan is also false whereas empty string is also false and false is also false null is false undefined is false that is what we saw as well right if you see 
boolean of zero will be false boolean of uh, nan is a false boolean of what else is there boolean of empty string is false boolean of false is false okay. and boolean of null is false if i go ahead and see boolean of null is false boolean of undefined is false okay for all these what is specified here the value is false but other than these it is true like for example let's say boolean of a number any number just give it is true boolean of infinity is also true boolean of minus infinity is also true boolean of let's say string some string you can go ahead and give some string it is true and boolean of uh, let's say true true is also true okay because this is uh, again um, a boolean of true true is again a boolean data type and we are passing that true to a boolean object wrapper just to see what it returns all right <clears throat> so understand this uh, truthiness and falseness of value because this will be a very interesting thing uh, because of its usage in whenever we are going to use in a conditional conditional checking statements like if condition and others this kind of truthiness and falseness value checking is is always encouraged okay and we'll see with examples how we'll do that later when we take up some complex examples when we understand the uh, decision making or loops and all the control statements and everything all right so in javascript right the the null and undefined they have a special name which uh, they call it as a nullish value okay the nullish value uh, always remember in javascript nullish value means the value which can either be null or undefined they are called nullish values and they are always having uh, uh, a value of false in their inherent um, truthiness and falseness value they always hold false all right now <clears throat> there is a particular data type which i want to talk about now is a big int we know that a number data type has got certain limit okay at at a certain point in time it does not be able to represent the um, uh, numbers using the normal number data types all right but for a very larger numbers or extremely smaller numbers we are going to use uh, another data type which is a primitive data type which is called as big int where it represents two large numeric numbers and there is a uh, there's a convention that we follow in order to represent a big int data type so big int data type whenever you are going to create always append n small letter n to the end of an integer so what it means is let's say i'm going to create a big int let's say large number is equal to something something followed by n okay this is what you are going to append and this will change its data type if you don't enter n now if i go ahead and see the type of large large number it will return big int okay and if i give the same number is equal to what is that one two three one two three one two without n the data type will be number okay the data type will be number the only difference why you are representing a big int number you need to append n at the last all right so usually for these smaller numbers this doesn't make sense to append n here but it is always for a larger number like for example if the uh, let's say if the number let's say is very big if the number is very big then this makes sense if i recall uh, what is that large number this will be a big int and let's say 
large number and this will give me the larger number. All right. Now, if the same number, if I go ahead and copy and use them, let's say let number is equal to this number and recall what number is. If you see, this will be put down into a exponential notation. Okay. And it will not give you the actual number value. It will put down into an exponential notation. All right. Now, with that being said, big int cannot be mixed with a number and other for some operations. Like, for example, <clears throat> what it means is if you want to add 12 plus 12, it is a number plus number addition. If the same will be 12 plus n, you cannot do this. Okay. So, therefore, any operation you cannot convert, you, you cannot combine the numbers and big int data types together and do an operation. So what it says is cannot mix big int and other data types. It will throw an error. All right. Always big int goes with big int and do the operations or convert a number into a big int and then go ahead and use it. That is again what you can do. But they need to be in the same big int data type in order to do the operations. And 0n is falsy, whereas everything else is true. Now, this is again, if I go to the Boolean um, object wrapper, and if I say uh, 0n, this will return what? False. And for any other values other than 0, it will return true. Because this is a 0n holds a false value of its booleanness property. Truthiness and falseness of a, a 0n is false. And it is not strictly equal to a number. Again, what here, there is a catch here. Let me show that. 1 is equal to 1n. What is happening here? The, the value of 1, 1 is what data type number? 1n is of a data type big int. I am just using a comparison operator which is equal to. 1 is equal to 1n will return true because we are only comparing the value. When I say it is a strict equal to, this will return false because these two data types are different even though the value is same. But the data types are different. That is what this statement means. It is not strictly equal to a number value. All right. Are you guys able to follow this? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Now, finally, there is a symbol uh, that data type. Again, uh, I don't want to go with the symbol. Only reason being you won't be able to follow what this is. Okay. Once we complete the objects, what are the objects? Like it has a key value property. There is a key and there is a value associated in the objects. Only then you will be able to follow what symbol is. Just to understand that it is a primitive value. Again, a data type. Like every primitive data type, if you see number, string, undefined, null, or for that matter, boolean or big int, all has got a single value associated with them. Okay. There is a single value that you can assign to a variable. Let's say let num is equal to 1, 2, 3 is a single value that a num variable is holding, which is 1, 2, 3. But when you enter objects, objects will contain multiple key value pairings. Okay, like like this example, what we saw here, the object is player, which is containing multiple key value pairing. The first name is Leo, last name is Messi, position is forward. Now there, there, there need to be a single ID that you can associate, unique ID or unique hidden ID that you want to associate with player object so that the recalling of that player object becomes very easy. Okay, so that is where your symbol kind of a data type is used. Represents a unique hidden identifier that no other code can accidentally access. All right, so they are very particularly linked to object. Okay, objects are again a, a kind of a simple data structures that we have in, in JavaScript where we are going to see what objects are again, what arrays are in, in the next uh, coming sessions but for now we'll park this for that day when we understand object then we'll visit 
what symbols is okay all right <clears throat> now so far we have seen a lot of things okay a lot of things in related to uh, how to print it on the console log there are again a lot of output statements or displaying the data like the console.log is one alert is again another okay so all those that are fine that are that will help you to display the data all right but there is nothing that we have looked into how to get a user input okay in 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 c programming language right there is something called as a scanf okay scanf is what scanf is again to read sorry scanf is what to read the user inputs okay from the standard uh, uh, input okay standard io but now the equivalent of this scan of in javascript what is that we are going to see in a while now how to get a user input in javascript that is a method that is built in methods we are going to see what it is for a for a time being in order to understand what that method is we need to understand what is bomb bomb is a again a concept in in javascript bomb stands for browser object model again bomb is again a javascript api okay application programming interface what is application programming interface and other details we'll again subsequently see later when we learn json and other things but for now understand that bomb provides certain objects and methods for interacting with the web browser okay what it contains bomb contains certain objects and built-in methods that will help us to interact with the browser so what are those some of the uh, method objects that it contains what it contains by default bomb by default has an object called window okay window is an object window object represents the browser window all right and it also contains bom also contains objects called location history screen navigator and document document is where the dom comes into picture again guys this is just a summary because i want to talk about user input in javascript that is the reason i am showing you this screen don't panic we'll we'll discuss this later in detail but for now we need to understand that bom is always there whenever a, a web browser is opened it contains by default the objects and the methods that are built in which will help us to interact with the web browser and window is of the choice important for us because window object is now related to the user input so window object is part of the bom by default this is the object of the browser object model with that being said let me go here and type window dot because this is an object it contains lot of uh, methods and properties associated with it okay now close is a property confirm again a uh, cookie store crypto and the, it has a document which stands for document object model again uh, even alert we saw the alert right alert is part of the window okay if you go ahead and see dot alert if you see here alert method is part of the window object and the beauty of window object is you need not specify window you can just call that method directly and if you want to explicitly type it means window dot something all right now window has got a particular method called prompt prompt is the method for user input in javascript what it does what it does is it instructs the web browser to display a dialog box a dialog box will be popped up on your screen whenever the prompt method is called and with the optional message prompting the user to input certain things like for example here if you see this is the dialog box that will appear whenever a prompt method is executed it says enter the username and user keys in the uh, username here and clicks okay then that value is returned by the prompt method and you, if user doesn't exist uh, um, doesn't enter anything it will keep on asking okay it won't end that is again uh, some uh, some kind of a nuance um, that we create here but 
If you cancel it, then it will return the null value. But if you don't cancel and key in certain value, then that will, that string or the text will be returned by the prompt method. Again, window.prompt waits until the user enters some text or he or she cancels it. Either enter the text and click OK or cancel it. If you cancel it, it will hold the null value. If you enter something, it will hold that string. Okay. So that is what it contains the text and returns the null value. Now let's observe that here with an example. What I can do window object dot prompt. I can say enter the uh, enter the name. Enter name. That's enough. Enter name. Uh, some colon and I'm going to give the space. All right. The moment I hit enter now, hit enter, I need to go back to the browser where I have opened this. Here you can see it says enter name. All right. And here I can go ahead and enter, let's say, uh, Rohit and I can click OK. The moment I click OK, then the prompt method will return that value. The value is Rohit. Now the same thing if I go ahead and execute once again and without entering anything. Okay. If I cancel, what will happen? It will return the value null. All right. Now, <clears throat> again, I need not enter. I need not give window explicitly because I can directly give the method name. That is fine. I need not give the object window here every time. It, uh, even this is absolutely fine. I can say prompt and followed by the string. It is, if I execute it, it will open up the dialog box and I can go ahead and enter. Okay. I can enter something and that will be returned. And what you need to observe here is prompt method will always return the string value. That is the reason you are seeing this in quotes. Okay, even though like for example, enter number, enter number, if I enter, it will ask if I go ahead and enter the number, okay, even the number they, uh, that I have entered will be put in a string format. Okay, that is something that you need to observe and whenever you are using that in your learning, Always make sure that this number is converted into the int and we, we can see how parse int is again one more method that it contains in subsequently how to use that. I'll, 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 I'll stop here um, uh, uh, this one and let me go to the next important method that I want to discuss here. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is again, this is a syntax. What you see here guys, the message and default message. Again, there is a very interesting here. I can just show you. Let's say I want to enter a number. Suppose I do not enter a number. All right. Now I can give the default value to it. Let's say default value is not not seven. Okay. What it means is if the user did not enter this number, then the prompt will take not not seven as a value and return it. Like for example, let's say I'll, I'll click enter now and I'll go back to this browser. Let's say what you see here, guys, it, it has by default not not seven has taken the value not not seven here and I can just go ahead and click. Okay. That value will be returned. Okay. This is what default message. What you have two parameters here. The first string is what you want to display there. And the second is the default message or default value that you want to assign it to all right so hope hope you you guys understood the user input in javascript okay with that being said let's let's continue here what we have seen is prompt will return a string okay even though you have entered the number it will return a string then that creates a problem for that to address there is a method called parse int what is this parse int does? Parse int is again a window method. 
okay if i go ahead and let me clear this window dot parse int you can see this is part of the window method okay if i don't give anything it will return nan because if i go ahead and give uh, some value then this string is converted into a number so that is where the parse int will play a big role what it does this parses a string argument and returns an integer all right in the same way like parse int there is also something called as parse float as well all right this also takes a string as an input but it will return a decimal number or a floating point number all right parsing behavior slightly changes but not necessarily the values we'll see that how it is the syntax is parsint and the string you can specify the radix that that doesn't matter all right now we have seen prompt i'm going to say enter your favorite number that's it so what i am asking i am asking the user to enter your favorite number the moment i hit enter what the user does user go and say my favorite number is uh, 1 2 3 okay now this will be captured as a string now in order to convert this what i need to do i need to again parse it so how am i going to parse it let's say this i am going to uh, store it as let input is equal to all right i will call this i'll enter 1 2 i have returned i have gained it if i see input value that is storing the string value here what i can do parse int and then i can pass the value of input so what this does this will convert the value into a string rather uh, convert into a number rather than a string 